First thing we're going to talk about today is uh, agents. Um, and if we get at the very end of class, you might talk about, about problem solving a little bit. Um, so this is stuff that sort of sets the groundwork for AI. So that um, when someone has a, uh, a problem an a that they think might be an AI problem, they come to you and they say, oh, you took an AI class. Can you code up a solution to this problem? You'll be able to characterize that problem and know what sort of things might apply. Um, so uh, this is, I think, like in chapter two of your textbook, something like that. Um, there are the simplest kind of, of agent. So what, well, first of all, anyone know what an agent is? An agent is something that has agency. OK, that was pretty helpful. So uh, agency, anybody? If you say, oh, like, talk to my agent, like, you know, you want me to give a class? Go talk to my agent. Uh, so the, uh, the, your agent is someone who's authorized to act on your behalf. Um, in AI, an agent is something that can act. So it does stuff. So an agent is something that does something. Um, and that's, that's, if you have to pick, like, one concept for how to think about an AI system, uh, your AI system is like an agent. Like, it's got... Input, it gets from the environment. We have input, right, through eyes and ears and nose and mouth and proprioception and stuff like that. We figure out what's going on in the world. And we have output. We do stuff. I mean, we can argue about whether you have free will or stuff, but regardless of how what you do is determined, you do it. You do something. You have agency. So an, an agent is something that does something. The simplest kind of agent you could possibly build is called a reflex agent. And that's a kind of agent where there's a direct mapping between the current state of the sensors and the action. So, yeah, exactly. Or thermostat, something like that. Like you map from uh, like motion sensor says there's motion to lights are on. That's a reflex agent. You can kind of debate like, is there thinking going on? Like, is that intelligent? Maybe the intelligence is in the creator that makes that lookup table to decide which action each sensory state should map to. Um, reflex agents have some good points. Um, they are usually very fast and reactive to the world. Like if the sensory input changes, usually doing this lookup is very fast. Like, you know, you build a hash table or something or just an index into an array and figure out what you're supposed to do. So often they can be very, very fast and reactive. But um, what are some disadvantages of a reflex agent? Yeah, what if that, that super intelligent lookup table designer, if they didn't anticipate that the state of the world would look like this, um, things will, yeah, who knows what's going to happen. This was actually a problem in some of the first self-driving cars in the 80s. Um, they did a lot of learning. Like they had a camera over someone's shoulders. They were driving, and they were learning. Like, you know, when the road looks like this, like you turn. When the road looks like that, you turn like that. And it, this was great, and the system performed really well until anything went very slightly wrong and it had never seen training data where the road was like going like that. And it was like, I don't know what to do. And it you know, would steer off the road if anything went slightly wrong because um, there just wasn't any training data for that circumstance. There was, it you know, went into its lookup table and it had nothing. Um, so people tend to only do very reasonable things and stay in reasonable situations. So if the system ever got into a slightly unreasonable situation, it would go crazy. Um, so there, that, that's one of the problems with a reflex agent. Uh, another one is that sometimes the immediate state of your environment doesn't encode everything. Right? Like, does, is there anything in your immediate sensory input that says that you have a homework assignment due two weeks from Monday? Like, no. It's like on a piece of paper hidden from your view right now. However, you may want to modify your actions for the coming few days to take into account that that assignment is going to be due in the future. Right? So a reflex agent, because you can have many different sensory readings that actually reflect different actual situations, the, the reflex agent is always going to take the same action for the same sensor reading. It doesn't reflect any sort of history. It has no memory at all. It doesn't, it, it doesn't build its own knowledge base. Right? There's, like enough, there's like air in its head. It doesn't deliberate about anything. Um, so 
if there's important stuff that's not in the immediate sensory signal, the reflex agent is not going to be able to take advantage of it. Right? Like, where did I put the food? Oh, it's in the refrigerator. Well, you know, I can't see into the refrigerator. Um, so unless you always want to go into the refrigerator all the time, um, then the reflex agent is not going to do a good job. Um, so that's why we have the second part, reflex agents with state. Right? So that's, this state is like your memory. So you map from a sensor reading plus whatever your state variable says to what to do, what action to give your effectors that have effects on the world, and your new state. So what's, what's a disadvantage? Like obviously that's good because now we can like remember some stuff. What's a bad thing about that? Yep, yep, that's one problem. Yep, if the system becomes a little bit harder to get a handle on, what exactly it's going to do, because it depends on the contents of this memory here. Um, this is one reason that uh, NASA has been very slow to, a, they're, they're one of the major researchers in, in AI, but um, very few missions have actually flown with AI on board. Um, because if, like, if you're the guy in charge of a $1 billion space mission, you really want to make sure the thing is going to work so that everyone's not like, he's the guy that wasted a billion dollars <laughs> when the thing like steered itself into the sun. <laughs> so, so yeah, so that's definitely one thing. Um, on the same film, you know, there's been little things like reflex agent and ESP creator effectors dependent on the creator of the nomination and what went wrong there. Yes, you're still filling out this, this table. Uh, you really have to do that right. Um, you have to anticipate everything. Um, and to a certain extent, I think that's going to be true with any agent, but it's, uh, it's particularly true with these guys because there's so many different states. And that's, that's, I think, even a third liability of this, this kind of agent, the, the reflex agent, that if you end up with a lot of state, this table is going to get really whopping huge. Like if this is like the contents of my to-do list, like there are a lot of possibilities for that. So there are going to be a lot of table entries. Um, so pretty soon this kind of architecture becomes unsustainable. Like the table just gets too big. You can't specify it all. You can't think of everything that might happen. So this is good as long as the state can be small. If the state has to get large, like a person, then this is not going to work. Um, so then, then we turn to these more sophisticated kinds of agents. Um, this is the kind you're going to implement um, for assignment one uh, as a goal-based agent, where you say, I want you to achieve a world in which there is no dirt in the world whatsoever. And that little robot's going to say, yes, sir. And it's going to just march around and visit all the dirty cells and vacuum them all up. And as soon as the robot reaches a world in which there is no dirt, ah, happiness. So now that's really good because in a way, you don't have to anticipate everything because the agent is making its own plans. The agent has to do a lot of thinking online, so it's slower. It's not just a simple lookup, like, what's the state of the world? Oh, that's what I'll do. It's like, what's the state of the world? Okay, now I think about exactly what the right plan is to achieve my goal, and now I'll start doing it. Okay, so it's a little slower, but it's, it's extremely flexible because as long as the planner is correct, then you throw any state of the world at it, and as long as the planner works, you'll get a plan back that will achieve the goal. You don't have to think ahead of time of all the ways the world could possibly be. The agent will think about what it should do, and it'll reason um, to about how to get to the goal, um, depending on what actions it has available, what means it has available. Um, is, that, is that, people understand kind of what that means? So this is goal-based agent. Uh, I heard, um, I think it might be in your textbook. There's a kind of beetle, uh, uh, like a dung beetle, that has this extremely elaborate behavior where it like digs a hole and lays its eggs in the hole and then kills a big bug and puts it in the hole for the little guys to eat when they hatch and then takes a big ball of dung and plugs the entrance of the hole with the ball. And then it like goes off and dies. Um, so this is like, wow, that's really smart. Amazing. But then it turns out that while it's rolling the big ball of dung to cover the hole, if you take the ball out and move it over, the guy is still trying to put the ball in the hole. Like he doesn't realize that the ball is not there anymore. Like he's completely, it's not, it is, 
like not even a very good reflex agent. Like he doesn't even have feedback as to whether he's actually still holding the ball or not. Um, <laughs> which is kind of crazy that you could actually have a creature that's that stupid do something that elaborate, but it happens. When you look at what humankind can do and how stupid we are, it's, uh, you know, we accomplish a lot too, I suppose. Um, but anyway, so that's that uh, dung beetle is not a goal-based agent. Like he's not even really looking at his sensors very much. Um, so the final, the final kind of agent here, um, we'll get to later in the class, not in assignment one, but like in assignment four, um, utility-based agent. And a utility-based agent deals with the problem that I think we all <laughs> face, that sometimes you have too many goals and you just can't achieve all of them, right? I would like to be doing computer science all the time and sleeping all the time <laughs> and eating chocolate cake all the time. And I just, like, I can't do, I have conflicting goals, right? I can't do the computer science and the cake eating at the same time because I bought a very nice keyboard and I don't want to get crumbs in it, right? So I can't do that. So I have, to, I have to make a plan to, okay, which of those do I care more about? You know, do I want to violate human rights and torture this person and thereby save thousands of people who are about to be destroyed by a nuclear device? Or do I preserve the rights of all humans and not torture this person and have all these other people die? You're, you're weighing two things and you can't have them both. Which is more important to you right now? There's a whole science of this called utility theory and decision theory. And AI is getting more and more into this as people want more and more often to build AI systems that solve really complicated problems, right? Like I can take the picture that the astronomer wanted, but it will make me point the telescope into the sun and thereby destroy it. Okay, like maybe we put the goal of preserving the health of the spacecraft above the goal of doing all the science missions, right? So you have multiple goals that you trade off. Utility is another word for happiness or wonderfulness or goodness. Um, and so this little agent is always trying to maximize utility, not just like slavishly achieve one particular goal, but maybe it's impossible to achieve all the goals, so it's just trying to maximize its utility according to the, you know, it may know stuff about the goals. This goal has this utility, that goal has that utility, um, that sort of thing. So NASA actually does that a lot because they get requests for scientists for like, because there's only one Mars rover and everybody wants to like, oh, I want to go drill into that rock. I want to drill into that rock. And it's like, okay, how many rocks can we drill today? Let's find the plan that maximizes the science return while minimizing the risk to the rover and all this. They're maximizing some utility function. And not everybody's goal is going to get achieved. So um, this is a very, very interesting kind of planning. And we will touch on it in the, in the fourth assignment. Questions about this stuff? People get this? There's a lot of terminology we're starting off with. 